So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, Talk to Tyler, episode four. We are here today talking with the Spring Forward um, team in the department. So I'm gonna let the Spring Forward team introduce themselves, starting with Amanda. Awesome, thanks Tyler. Um, yeah, so I am Amanda Donahue. I am the program manager for Spring Forward. Um, and I've been in this role since almost a year. Um, so, so I think maybe next week-ish will be a year um, in this role. And prior to that, I was an academic advisor with military and veteran students. And prior to that, um, worked as a specialist in, a, um, in Buckeye Link. So helping with financial aid, registrar, bursar, admissions, kind of all of those business practices of being at Ohio State. Um, yeah, and so I actually was here as an undergrad as well. Um, and then came back as a staff member full time in 2012, um, originally from Tuscarawas County, uh, New Philadelphia, Ohio. And so when I was here for my bachelor's degree, I got a degree in English and a minor in professional writing. Um, that was not the original plan, plan but just like many students, it, it evolved um, during my time here. Um, so a degree in English and then um, while I was working, I went back for my master's in public policy and leadership through the Glenn College. Awesome. Amy? So hi, everyone. My name is Amy Collins Warfield, and I'm the academic advisor who supports Spring Forward. Like Amanda, I've been in this position. It will be one year on December 16th. Prior to that, I had been an assistant director in first year experience, and prior to that, I was an academic advisor in the College of Education and Human Ecology for five years, where I advised in the human sciences area. But I've been at Ohio State since 2009 in various capacities as a grad student or other roles. I also have, so I have a master's degree from Ohio State and a master's degree from Bowling Green State University and my bachelor's was in history at Ohio Wesleyan University and I'm actually currently in a PhD program here at Ohio State in agricultural communication, education, and leadership. I'm originally from Curtis, Ohio, which is a tiny town east of Toledo that no one's ever heard of. So I wouldn't expect you to know where it is either, but if anyone is from the 419, hooray! And let's see, you know, I, I love working for Spring Forward. I love being an academic advisor and I love being at Ohio State. I think that probably covers everything. Yep, it does. So thank you all for introducing yourselves and definitely your different educational experience and background. Seems you've been at the university for a long time. Definitely helping out with the Spring Forward program for like a year now is definitely something that's really great. Um, so throughout this talk, we're just going to talk more about the Spring Forward program and how it relates with the DLC, some changes that you all might have made, and also university questions as well. Um, so the first question will be directed towards um, Amanda. So what is the Spring Forward program and how does it relate to the work that the DLC does? Yeah, absolutely. So Spring Forward is a um, program for new first year students. Um, that focuses on students who maybe in their first semester, the transition to Ohio State was a little more difficult than expected um, and impacted their academics. Um, and that could be for so many reasons. Um, and so then Spring Forward really kind of helps get them back on track by giving them some resources and some tips um, through a few phases that I think Amy will touch on later. Um, but a big part of that is a lot of the, um, the class that we teach, for example, and we have an academic coach as part of um, the Spring Forward team who are trained by um, the Dennis Learning Center. And so a lot of those strategies that maybe would be covered in typical Dennis Learning Center workshops or one-on-one um, -on -one coaching appointments are, are kind of interweaved into the Spring Forward program. And so that I think there's a big connection there where I would consider us partner offices um, in a lot of ways across the university and, and um, the director of the Dennis Learning Center really kind of helped get Spring Forward on its feet. And so um, there's been a connection for years and years and, and it just keeps getting stronger. Yeah, definitely. I know our um, assistant director, Dr. Lauren Hensley, she's like big advocate, like helping out with the Spring Forward program and everything that like went into it. So that's amazing, like with the start of the Spring Forward program. Yeah, absolutely. 
and, and Tyler has been helping us too. So um, I, we were just saying at the beginning of this call about, I don't know, almost a year ago, right? Just, just under a year ago, um, Tyler was helping us with um, getting students on board for this past summer's um, Spring Forward cohort. So thanks, Tyler. No problem. Yeah, definitely enjoyed time working also with the Spring Forward students during the summer, meeting with my like group of students and definitely them learning a lot about not only like the experience with college with like COVID with the Spring Forward program, but also just getting to know them a little bit more like every week me scheduling appointments with them was really nice as well. Yes, they loved it. So. Yes, I enjoyed every one of them, every one of them. <laughs> so next question will go to Amy. So how is the program structured uh, for Spring Forward? Yeah, that's a great question. So I need to give a, a 20 second background. So the Spring Forward program has been in existence since 2017, but didn't have full-time staff until 2019. So in 2017, 2018, and 2019, students participated in the program by taking a spring class and then applying to the program and taking a summer course. And now with Amanda and I and Paul running the program, we are continuing that and adding a little bit more since we can give it our full attention. So currently the way Spring Forward is set up is that students register for typically for ESE PSY 2059, becoming a self-regulated learner in either the fall or the spring of their first year. That's not a hard and fast requirement to be part of Spring Forward, but most students enter our program by taking one of those classes. And we do have seats available in spring. So if you're watching and you're interested and you could use some help with your academics, contact us. So once you've completed that course, we have a summer enrichment program and applications for that usually open late January, early February. Students apply and are accepted to our summer program. So as part of our summer program, we cover tuition and fees for up to six credit hours of classes. Most students take general education classes. In addition, students take uh, an additional Spring Forward course with us, ESE PSY 5193 was the course last summer. And we meet once a week and students also complete some assignments and watch some online lectures. And we continue to provide <clears throat> excuse me, provide students with academic support all throughout the summer. So by the time fall comes around, people feel really good about where they are academically, they feel prepared, they feel like they're on track for the remainder of their time at Ohio State. Also in the summer, we have our students meet with me, the academic advisor, with our academic coaches. So there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention for students and helping them you know, kind of solve any problems that they may have, whether academically or in their personal lives, problems that are impacting their academics. And then once you've completed that program, you're a, a Spring Forward alum and you're part of your cohort through the re remainder of your time at Ohio State. So I stick on as a supportive academic advisor for students and can talk with them through many academic related things that they might need. Paul continues to provide academic coaching and we also have programming. So this fall we assisted with two step cohorts. Nope, we assisted with step cohorts for two meetings, three meetings. It's been a long semester. I think everyone can relate to that. What, what day is it? What number is it? So we helped with step and then we also had some additional meetings. So we have like lunchtime socials where someone can drop in and just chat about things not related to school or we've had stress relief events. We've had as part of step we had a faculty panel come in and talk about research. So again, just some ongoing program to help students and then just continued one on one support from us for the remainder of their time at Ohio State. So we do have some Spring Forward students who were originally part of the very first year of the program who have graduated and then kind of through, I would say there's maybe around 150 students total if you count everyone who's ever participated and we had 55 who joined us last summer, 2020. Yeah, it seems like definitely like as you're, like you're talking about the structure of the program, it's definitely well organized and I'm very like impressed with all like the organization of it, especially since you like just been a part of it for a year, honestly. So having the structure is definitely like important. And that's like a lot of students have been through the program too. So thank you both for that. Thank you for that. And you know, I just realized that I forgot one piece, which is if we're in person, we pay for you to live on campus in the summer as well. 
we weren't last summer. I don't know what we're going to be this summer. Thanks, COVID. But if our program happens in person, we also pay for room and board for students. Yeah, that's really great. That's a uh, huge for like some students, especially like for their housing, honestly. Yeah. All right. So next question will go to Amanda. So besides like academics that go on within the Spring Forward program, what other development areas does Spring Forward um, provide to students that they focus on? Yeah, so beyond just academics, um, especially in the summer, um, we kind of dive into a lot of other focus areas. So students think about um, the major that they're in and if that's the right fit for them and um, kind of uh, examining why they chose that. For example, we have um, many students who maybe come in and they're, they're thinking a medical route or something like that. But then as you talk to students, you kind of hear, no, I, I'm really just what the reason that I'm attracted to that field is because I want to help people. And so then we talk about other majors that that might allow them to do that um, and, and still kind of achieve their goals. Um, so there's focusing, there's focuses around that. There's focuses on um, wellness and kind of multiple dimensions of wellness. So whether that's physical, um, emotional, we do a big piece on financial wellness where we bring in um, Buckeye Link and student financial aid to talk to students about all of those things that maybe you heard about during orientation, but you, you just had so many other pieces of information getting thrown at you, it just didn't quite stick. And, and now that you've actually experienced it and gone through it, it, it makes more sense to, to talk through it this time. Um, so there's pieces on that. There's a lot of pieces on uh, like a fixed versus a growth mindset. So understanding where maybe things went awry um, your first semester and taking accountability for the pieces that, that you control there um, and knowing that, of course, not everything is under your control, um, but taking accountability for what you can control and then um, kind of reshifting or reframing the mindset to see how we can um, get back on track and, and be resilient um, moving forward. Um, Amy, what else do I, what am I missing? Yeah, I would say a big piece that we cover is the importance of asking for help. So not only do we help you identify who you should be talking to or where you should be going for help, but we also just spend a lot of time talking about it's okay to ask for help. You should ask for help. We all ask for help. We can't get through college alone. So there's lots of opportunity for students to interact with each other and to share struggles that they have had in common and problems that they've had to solve on their own and give advice to each other. And also just to normalize that we all have encountered struggles in college. Nobody gets through college perfectly. There's no one right way to do college. It's kind of figuring out what your goals are and what you want to achieve and helping you figure out the best path for that, even if it doesn't look the same as when you first started. So I think altogether that probably sums up everything that we tackle. Yeah, I think one of the important things you, you mentioned there is, is that student kind of community building piece as well. Um, so where students really do get to know the Spring Forward team, but also each other um, and, and the um, vulnerability and honesty that students are then able to have with one another and, and how they can kind of, it, it, it just really brings a sense of community that you know that you're not in this alone and you're not the only one who felt this way um, your first semester and maybe even your second semester and sometimes your third semester and that even, and then that these pieces in this team are around you. So then let's say, you know, in year three, one semester you hit a bump in the road you already have the tools and resources and support system to kind of know how to, to rebound and, and get back on track and, and correct in those situations. Yeah, definitely what you two like focus on is definitely what we do like with academic coaching, especially for spring forward students, but for all our students um, is the pathway with college. So there's not just one specific way, like maybe this studying strategy might not work for you, but maybe there's another studying strategy. So definitely that component is very like, helpful and I'm glad like it's with corporate and with spring forward and definitely I saw that a lot with working with students over the summer um, for the spring forward program. Yep just have to find what works for you. Right. All right so next question will go to you Amy. So is there any like prerequisites for the spring forward program? I know you talked a little bit about it um, with the courses that they have to take and then the application but are there any yeah. other prerequisites for it? No. 
Not really. I would say that we are looking for students who we're looking for students who experience some sort of academic struggle in their first year because that's that's the heart of our program is to assist you in, in gaining those skills to continue to grow as a student. We're interested in working with students who know that there's areas where they need to grow and want to grow. Even if you don't know how to do that, we can help you with that piece. But we're interested in working with students who want to learn to do things better, to live their best student life, I would say. Generally, we like for students to have completed the Ed Psych 2059 or 1259 or another course affiliated with the Dennis Learning Center because it gives them the foundational material that helps with our summer program and because then you've had the opportunity to try some of these strategies before you get to our summer program. That's not a hard and fast prerequisite. That's just something that we, we like students to consider taking. I will also say that currently our program is only open to domestic students. So unfortunately at this time, international students aren't eligible for our program. And in years past, the program has only been open to Ohio residents. Students who are not from Ohio were eligible but would have to pay the difference in the tuition and fees. Amanda and I are not really certain what that's gonna look like for summer 2021. And so when that time comes around, we'll be sure to include all that information in our app application and marketing, but I would say that's maybe just the other the other piece. So really, we're just interested in helping students. We're interested in working with students who know that they want some help. They know they want to grow. They just need a little help, you know, a little direction in getting there. Enthusiasm, commitment, that's what we're looking for. Oh, and you have to be a new first year student. I think we've kind of thrown that out a couple times, but just to make that clear, you have to be someone who started as a brand new first year student on Columbus campus in autumn of 2020 to participate in summer of 2021. Okay. Yeah, definitely that was, there could be like some differential like things going on there with definitely confusion. So thank you, like you clarified that with, that, with us. Yeah. Um, so next question goes to Amanda, and then these are two questions actually. So the first one is, what are the requirements for completing the program? And also, is there any reward or scholarship that students can earn by enrolling into this program? Because I know um, Amy talked about them getting their housing paid for, but is there any other rewards or scholarship? Um, let me repeat the questions again. I could definitely do that. Uh, I think I got it. So kind of Part one of the question are what are the requirements for completing the program and so to complete the program it's kind of like an interesting question because you're never really done with the program so i guess the full answer to that question is to graduate from ohio state is kind of when you're no longer a spring forward student is is once you graduate um, until then we are gonna um, kind of stick around and, and be there to support you um, but one of the big components of Spring Forward is that summer enrichment program in the summer between your first and second year. Um, and to be considered a, to have successfully completed that, um, we like to see students get at least an 80% in that course that Amy talked about, that Spring Forward course, that um, ES EPSY 5193, as it was listed last term. Um, I'm sorry, last summer. Um, so, that's kind of like what we consider a successful completion, but it really means so much more. It really means not just a grade that you received in the course, but, but what um, skills that you can demonstrate now that you've done, that you're done with the course and, and kind of that change in mindset and, and the belief in yourself. Um, so it's not really so much like a, a box that you can check, but I, I think just a way that you um, are approaching difficult situations and, and feel like you can go into autumn semester in a nice safe space like GPA wise academically but um, mentally as well feeling like you you have the resources and the tools that you need to be successful um, for the next term. So that's I think question one. Amy do you think I missed anything there? No. Okay. Um, and then question two rewards and scholarships that students can earn from participating. Um, so students who participate in summer, the summer program, well, okay, let me go back. Any student who takes the 2059 course that Amy has mentioned multiple times, even that you get a book scholarship. So we are paying for your book um, for 2059. So assuming you're full time, there's really no additional cost um, for you adding 2059. It, it really is just there to, to 
help you in any way it can. Um, and then for summer, of course, as Amy mentioned, we cover tuition and fees for um, those six credit hours, as well as room and board if you're on campus. Um, and then also books are covered. So you get a book stipend um, for summer as well. So really no out-of-pocket costs should be incurred by a student during summer term. Um, cost owed to the university, of course. Um, and then for students who successfully complete summer, again, with that 80% and some other things, um, there is a book scholarship that they can get for, for fall semester as well. So to kind of help them out um, with fall semester. And, and all of that being said, all of the, the guaranteed money um, for participating in Spring Forward, I will say that um, Spring Forward is really well connected and we have a lot of great support across the university. So if there are times in years two or three or four and you're just trying to get to graduation and you need a little extra help, um, Spring Forward can kind of help guide you to those resources or help you to access those resources. If those weird, odd scenarios come up, um, we're kind of there to support you in that as well. We don't, we would never want um, finances to be the reason that you, you don't graduate from OSU. Yeah, definitely. Not. That, I think that covers it. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely like that's great like that continuation that you're like there to support them like since I know like I said like when you like when you know you completed the program like it's always that continuous um until you like graduate from the university so it's great that you also provide that support for like your alum but also for people um that need these like financial resources for the student forward students in the in the future yeah absolutely and 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 they're a great group of students and I think anyone on campus would say that you know, if, if students are really trying their best in, in putting in, in the hard work, then um, the campus as a whole is going to kind of come around and, and get them to the finish line. Definitely, I would agree. <laughs> so next uh, two questions, we'll go to Amy. Uh, this is our last couple of questions for the like basic information about Spring Forward. So Amy, so what are the, like the biggest takeaways from for the students that are part of the Spring Forward program and how do students register for the Spring Forward program? Yeah, so I think the most important takeaway is ideally we want you to get back on track academically and be in good standing with the university. So for some students that might mean getting off of academic probation or major probation, that might mean getting your GPA back to where it needs to be to keep your scholarship things like that. That's our, our number one goal and part of the reason why we pay for you to take two classes in the summer with support so that you can boost your GPA that way. So I think that's the, the number one takeaway for our students. But beyond that, I think that we want you to, as a result of participating in Spring Forward, to just have more confidence as a student, both in and outside of the classroom. So we want you to spend some time in, in figuring out who you are and what is it that you want to do and what is the right academic path at Ohio State to get you there or what options do you have for your future. We want you to be able to figure out how you fit in. Where do you belong at Ohio State? Who makes up your support system because that looks different for every student. We as Amanda said, we're well connected in Spring Forward, so we want to enable you to get what you need to accomplish all of those things that I just described. So that might mean helping you figure out how to navigate university policies and procedures or helping to get you past some barriers that you're facing or getting you connected with others on campus who might be able to help you if we can't. So we were kind of like, we're a source of connection for students as well. So I think those are probably the biggest things that we hope that students take away from the program and ultimately to graduate from Ohio State with your Ohio State degree. Recognizing that sometimes ultimately Ohio State is not in the end path for a student. Sometimes a student determines they, they want to study something else and so that requires transferring to a different school or you know, situations like that. But ultimately we want you to finish college. <laughs> That's our biggest goal. And then to uh, register for Spring Forward. So if you're interested in taking the EdPsych 2059 class, you can just email 
springforward at osu.edu and I check that email. I have the ability to add any student to that class regardless of your major. So if you're interested, just send us a message and we'll get you into the course. You can also talk to your assigned academic advisor and they can add you to the class. Or if you're interested in another course with the Dennis Learning Center like Ed Psych 1259, some of those you can add yourself to. And then if you're interested in applying for our summer enrichment program, we'll be We'll put the application link on our website when it becomes available. We'll be sending out marketing materials. We'll talk about it in the 2059 course. So we'll have more information when that's available. Amanda, would you add anything? That it would probably be available late February, early March um, for the summer program. So that's typically when we put an application out. Um, yeah, just like everyone else, we are waiting for university decisions on what summer is going to look like. So hopefully by then we'll have some more answers. Yeah, and definitely we'll um, advertise it on our social media platforms uh, via the DLC with um, registering for your summer enrichment and also for those courses as well um, with our 2059 and also our 1259 courses and all the courses that we do offer at the DLC, but main focus for spring for the 2059 and 1259 as well. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so these next couple of questions are going to be talking about COVID changes within Spring Forward. I know definitely the uncertainty of all the things going on with COVID and seeing if there is going to be possibility with the Spring Forward program going on. Um, so if you can just answer these the best that you can. And we're going to first start off with Amanda. So due to COVID, how has the Spring Forward, Spring Forward program changed um, with you all? Yeah, so, I mean, just like everyone else, last spring we were in the middle of teaching a class and, and we had to pivot and um, move the course online. Um, the 2059 class is always taught as a hybrid section anyway, so um, some of our content, you know, was already available online, but the lectures and, and the class discussion and things like that are, are what we had done in person prior to. Um, so that pivoted um, online and, and we were lucky to have one of our instructors who had been teaching for a long time. So it was very familiar with the material um, and kind of we were able to, to make that change pretty seamlessly kind of as a team. So that was nice. Um, I think that students, even though they were online, still kind of felt connected and we were still able to get the majority of our summer participants were from the 2059 class, which tells me that 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 class, they already felt a connection to spring forward and the connection and a passion to continue kind of um, learning about the things that the foundations that are set in 2059. So I think that that was great. And then this fall, the course was taught, um, Amy has, is teaching the course right now, um, or well, no, we're in finals week, so she's not teaching it right now, but she did teach it this fall um, in a um, synchronous online format which is how it will be taught in session one in the spring. And then session two, we are still hopeful that we might be able to teach it as a hybrid course. We'll see. Um, but it, I think the course is still set up in a way that students have a lot of opportunities to interact with one another and a lot of opportunities for reflection. And as instructors, we take a lot of time um, to give student feedback um, as well. And so even if you're, we're not seeing you face-to-face -face in the class every week, um, the submissions that students make and the feedback that we give is also very thoughtful. So I think that's great. Um, and then for the summer program, of course, we were online this past fall, but, um, or summer, um, but in summer and fall, in addition to the course and things like that that Amy has already talked about, um, we did a lot of, of virtual programming with students that that I think was really exciting. So we hosted a virtual cooking class um, where one of the chefs from OSU came in and, and did a live cooking demonstration where you could kind of cook along. Um, students made sugar scrubs. We did yoga. Um, we had a, a couple of movie nights. We um, had just like some lunch drop-ins, like, hey, just, just come eat lunch with us and hang out, um, which were really well attended. Um, we did some mindfulness sessions. So um, all of these kind of things that, that are still happening, even though we're in a virtual environment. And I think one of the big things is um, students are using, we, we put in the summer, put all of the summer cohort students in a group me. And so they're really communicating still via group me and, and, and just talking with each other. I think 
um, they're doing a really great job just motivating each other and um, empathizing with each other at times. Um, so just that continued sense of camaraderie that's happening um, among students without spring forward staff needing to input, um, I think is really cool too. Chemistry is hard, send memes. <laughs> yes, we get that one often. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a lot of students come to us about Kim too. It's just definitely good old times with chemistry, but they're able to get through it. Um, and that's, that's great that you like are still incorporating all these things within a virtual setting. So still worrying about like those dimension of wellness and what you implement like the development areas and trying to incorporate that still for students and the students are being receptive for it. So I think that's like really great as well. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have a good group and and I, I, I know, I guess, that the transition to online was hard and unexpected and longer than any of us would want. Um, but I, I think that the, this adaptability and resiliency that, that students are really latching onto is, is really kind of helping pull them through. Absolutely, absolutely, agree. Um, so next question is for Amy. Um, so how did the students from this past cohort, you all like, talked about it a little bit, so how did the students from this past cohort enjoy the program with all the uncertainties that was going on uh, with COVID going on and other things that are going on within this country? Um, so how did they cope with this? How did they enjoy the program? Yes. So I'm gonna give you a response that's based in the feedback that we actually received from students. So we had students complete a program evaluation at the end of the term. What we heard most frequently from students is that they appreciated having the opportunity to connect with real people. Yes, it was on Zoom. Yeah, we'd really rather you'd be like in three dimensions, but that every week they had the opportunity to connect with other students and to connect with staff at the university. Because even if they were taking other classes, they could have been asynchronous or there may just not have been opportunities to interact with students or faculty or staff. So it was just, they appreciated the opportunity to check in every week or with their academic coach to the Dennis Learning Center, just to interact with real people who were experiencing many of the same challenges or could help them through those challenges. I would say the students who had the time to attend our social events really enjoyed, again, an opportunity to get to know other people and to do something other than just like sit around your house. <laughs> I mean, it was still in your house, but like it was doing something different at your house, right? A little bit of variety there. I know that a lot of students wrote in our feedback that they really wish the program had been in person, as did we, but I think that students overall were glad to have the opportunity, if you have to learn online, to be part of a program that engages you intentionally, where people want you to be here, we want you to learn, we want you to interact with us. So it was maybe you know, more engaging and participatory than other classes that they had enrolled in and they valued that. Yeah, definitely everyone like does wish like everything was like in person for summer term um, and getting cut short definitely like wasn't ideal at all for anyone. Um, but it was able, that was good that like they were able to easily like interact with people and like interact with people every week and make that connection. Yeah, that was our goal. All right. So this next question is for any one of you. So do you think that you did a good job of uh, engaging with the students without being able to see them in person? So either one of you can respond to it, only one of you can, um, whatever you want to do. Sure, so I'll go ahead and tackle that because it kind of ties into what we previously talked about. You know, we in March, in March, we had actually already been brainstorming and planning for an in-person program. So COVID hit and we had to change everything. I can tell you that we put a lot of intention in everything that we planned. So every activity had a purpose, every assignment had a purpose, every login had a purpose, that we are conscious of wanting to use our students' time well in ways that can help them. Knowing, of course, when you have 55 students in a class, not every student is gonna need everything that you offer, right? So we did our best to meet the greatest number of needs for the greatest number of students. I think, 
you know, Amanda and I, Paul wasn't part of the team yet. Amanda and I have previous experience in teaching online and leading programs. And so I think that helped us. And I think that we took students' feedback into consideration wherever we could to engage. I will say that there are students, participants from summer 20 that I have never met in person. <laughs> that I have only known them through Zoom, you know, unless I taught them in 2059 before we went online. And then there's a couple students that I had just met in an advising capacity. There are several students I've never met in real life, <laughs> 3D life. And so I look forward to the opportunity, hopefully sooner rather than later, to come and like shake their hand or give them a hug or acknowledge them as a, as a three-dimensional person. So I like to think that we did the best that we could and kept students needs and interests in mind and made sure that what we were doing had thought and intention behind it. Yeah, that I think you covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next question. So uh, this is to the both of you actually, you both can respond to this. Um, so what was the students' favorite part about this year's program? So I think that varied a little bit based on, on what, you know, on what a student needed or how their summer went. The students who were able to participate in some of our social activities listed that as a favorite. You know, we also had students who worked lots and lots of hours this summer, and so they weren't able to participate in that, but they appreciated the interaction that we had during our live logins on Thursdays and Fridays. We had students who really appreciated or found a lot of benefit in having conversations about what is the best major for them. Like maybe they were finally able to let go of something and find whatever passion it is that really inspires them and will set them up for success. I think that students in our evaluation wrote a lot about they enjoy the opportunity again to work one on one with someone. So whether that was with their Dennis Learning Center coach or with me or Amanda, that at a university with 60,000 plus students, that someone here knows their name, knows their interests, knows what they're struggling with, knows who they are. And I think, you know, aside from programming in classes, that's probably the most important thing for students. And what they would say was their their favorite or the best part of the program just really feeling like that someone hears them and, and knows who they are yeah and i think outside of that um i think students valued that that the program worked right i mean what the program is set out to do is, is to improve their gpa i mean all of these other things too um but to to help them improve their gpa and, and be in a good place academically um and so nearly every single one of our students uh, raised their GPA from their time of application until their time of completing summer program, um, which means so many, so many things and so many good things is that they're set in a good place for, um, for their second year to start out their second year. They're in a good place for financial aid, um, whether that be financial aid through the FAFSA or through the university or through a department on campus. Um, they're in a good place with their college. So if they're ready to um, have to apply to a major or things like that, kind of setting them up in a place where they're successful and, and can be admitted into the major that they're looking for. Um, so all of those kind of things, I think the, the stress that being in a good place academically, like if you feel confident about where you are academically, that's just one piece of stress that's removed from other areas of your life. And so you can really focus on, on other areas if you feel like you're in a good space with that um, to start a semester. Yeah, definitely. It seems like the spring forward students got a lot out of the program and it's good like they got something out of it, not just like only the academic piece of raising like the GPAs that you were saying, but also just like understanding that like we are like a support and we are a resource for them and understanding like they're, since it's so big, like uh, Amy and you were saying, they're able to find someone there to like connect with them and to help them along the process. So definitely like that's a huge thing to help them with and understand not having that like lost freshman like ideal basically um and understanding that there is things for them to help them become successful here and graduate right so next question is what changes do you expect for the 2021 cohort and what is the program going to look like i know definitely 
we still don't know if things are going on, like if it will be, let's say, in person or probably virtual. Um, but if you can just answer the best of your ability with that second question, the second part of that question. But the first part again is what changes do you expect for the 2021 cohort? And what is the program going to look like? Yeah, so I think, I think this, this class is so different, right? I mean, our autumn 20 classes has really been through the ringer. Um, so, and, uh, but, but it's different is, is that they finished their high school year online. Um, they did their whole first year of, of college online. So uh, the change might actually be if we go back to in-person, what does that look like? And, and how, do you, how do you adapt to, to being in-person when you're used to being online and in pajamas all the time? Um, so, so I think that could look totally different than, than what we um, were dealing with last year. Um, in a good way. And both, I think both bring positive um, histories, is that um, being able to have those experiences and know how to learn in different environments is so valuable um, throughout the rest of your life, not only your time at OSU, but um, for jobs in the future, you know, if you're savvy in a virtual world, you could work, uh, you know, live in Ohio and, and your office could be in Chicago or, you know, whatever it might be. It just really gives you so many more opportunities there. So I think that's, that's really kind of an interesting piece. Um, the other piece, of course, is, is the pass, no pass. Um, so in kind of where maybe students had their first semester of college and were opted to take um, some of their classes pass no pass and so now they're going into a second semester where some of those courses are sequenced and we we're not quite sure right now how the how the grading scheme is going to go for for a spring semester and so what does that mean if we don't have the option to take pass no pass anymore do we know how how to kind of allocate our time and into maneuver um, a system where um, Typically, Ohio State is, is, is challenging, right? Many would consider it a public Ivy. And so how do you, how do you navigate that um, in an online world with a different grading scheme, maybe from your dorm room or from, from your hometown? Um, and so all of those things, I think, are gonna, gonna change how students are learning and, and how um, we offer the summer program. So do we have opportunities to offer it in a different way as well, um, kind of, instead of saying it has to go this one way, or there may be kind of degrees um, that we can offer it in, in different, um, to fit students' needs. Mm -hmm. Amy, you like to add anything? Nope, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely like time will tell like how the program will look like and hopefully you'll like the students for the 2021 cohort will know how it looks like and also like within the classes for the spring semester, Definitely news will be coming soon, I would say. Hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> You're hopeful too. <laughs> so as we go into like our concluding questions, so um, these are for like both of you as well. We just have a couple more questions. So what motivated you to work for the Spring Forward program? Yeah. Do you want you want to you can go first. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so I think that um, my time at Ohio State has kind of continued to evolve and, and it's funny because I think it's what we tell students all the time is, is that when I graduated with a bachelor's degree in English, is this what I thought I would be doing? No. Uh, not like I didn't want to be doing it, but I didn't even consider it as a possibility. Like it didn't even cross my mind. Um, and so when I came back and started working full time at Ohio State um, and worked in Buckeye Link, I liked the work and I liked um, the, all of the resources that it connected me to across campus and all the things I learned in that job. Um, but it was so many students, you know, like you didn't have your specific group of students. And so I wanted something smaller. And then so I went to military and veteran services and kind of got that advising piece and, and worked with a specific population of students. Um, and then as I was working with that population, I, I realized some inequities across the university um, that I, I felt like needed addressed and needed to have a voice. And um, I also got a master's degree in, in public policy and leadership. And so um, I, I was ready for a shift uh, to a new position to, to be able to use some of the skills I learned in that degree as well. 
And so I think that is kind of what brought me to spring forward is, is this idea of wanting to make a change and, and being in a position where we can and working with this smaller group of students where um, you really do have that one on one connection with them and, and you know about them and can relate to them personally and, and advocate for change that's meaningful to them. That's really great, honestly, that like your your story, especially like looking at the inequities that are happening that you saw and like you being an advocate for it. So definitely that's great. Amy, do you have anything? What was like your, uh, what motivates you to work with the Swing Forward program? Yeah, I would say that there are many things that Amanda and I have in common <laughs> in that sense. I mean, I also value being in a place where I can advocate for barriers to be removed to student success, where I can bring forward the concerns that our students have to hopefully, you know, maybe bring change to policies or procedures to facilitate students getting through their experience at Ohio State. But I think at the heart of it, I want to be that person that I wish that I had in college. I was a first generation college student. I came from a working class background. I didn't know anybody at the university that I attended and, you know, I had to make new friends. I came in as a chemistry major, graduated with a history degree, got a nice W on my transcript from chemistry. You know, just, I wish the, in college, I wish that I had had someone that I could have gone to talk to to just kind of normalize some of these things that you encounter in your first year. And so I think at the heart of it, I was looking for a position where I could continue to build one on one relationships with students to be that person for them. I also really love academic advising, even like the course scheduling and helping you with your degree audit and your shopping cart and all that. I really love that. Not everyone does, but I really love that. So it's a great opportunity there as well. And teaching. So I really love teaching at the college level. I think I have over 11 years of college teaching experience now. It's something I'm really passionate about and really strive to do well. And so I really appreciate that opportunity through the program as well, teaching 2059 in our 5193 course. So you know, I agree with Amanda on a lot of points. And I think for me, the motivating factor was the ability to build one-on-one -on -one relationships with students to help them live their best student life. It's like probably should be a tagline, like Amy, TM, help you live your best student life. But that's really what it's about for me. I know that's what it's about for Amanda. And I know that's what it's about for Paul as well. Yeah, definitely. I can see like the, the similarities between the motivation and definitely you can see it within the Spring Forward students and also the program. So what are you most proud of in the Spring Forward program? So been working for it for a year now. What are you most proud of from the program? Our students. Most proud of our students. You know, we have lots of students who raise their GPA. That's awesome. We have a lot of students who learn important things about themselves, about who they are and what they want to be and what they want to study and how they're going to get there. And that's awesome. We have students who made really huge leaps and bounds and we have students who made little tiny steps towards progress and both of those things are awesome as well. I mean, I don't know if you wanna add anything like programmatically, but I think we can agree that's probably the best part. <laughs> I, I agree that the students are the best part. I think I am also proud of, of the work that the staff does um, for Spring Forward, I, I think, you could tell in the last responses that that we're dedicated to the work and if Paul was here, he would say the same. Um, and so I think the commitment to the work and the long days and tireless hours and um, everything like that and is, is hard, but like Amy said, we, we see it pay off in the success of the students and, and that's really what it's all meant for at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. Those are some great things like to be proud of, especially the students since working so hard to like get their GPAs up and also see them succeed is definitely truly great. Yeah. So maybe this probably ties in with like your next part to um, this next question. So like, what is your favorite part of the Spring Forward program? I understand you're most proud of the students, um, but probably you're probably proud of that. Like, that's probably your favorite part as well, but still just to ask, like what is your favorite part about Spring Forward? So if I had to pick something that wasn't students, because that would still be my answer. <laughs> I would say the opportunity to teach. It's, I just love it. I love being able to help students in the classroom to learn. I love watching students learn and I just actually love the 
process of teaching and grading and designing curriculum and all that stuff. Did I just say that I like grading? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be true, but <laughs> nerd. <laughs> Um, I think for me, it's um, connecting with other resources across campus I, and, and connecting students. So figuring out um, what our students need and then where they can find it that's not us. Um, I, I have no reason to think that we need to reinvent the wheel. Um, so in other places on campus, like the Dennis Learning Center can, can um, kind of fill gaps that we really know that our students need, like let's let let's make that connection and, and let students um, do that and, and succeed in areas where, in realms where other areas have expertise. Yeah, definitely. I can, I can see that with you all too, honestly, like with the students, but also that's interesting, just the different aspects that you're favorite about, that favors uh, the spring forward program that you all like understand. So going back to like our stu your students, basically. So what have you learned from your students this past summer with the cohort that you had uh, with the Spring Forward program? I already know what Amy's going to say. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Oh, okay. So I think, you know, especially this summer with everything that's happened in 2020, I think that working with students in this program has really challenged me to stay up on current events, to challenge me to think about my privileges that I have, challenge my knowledge of how best to support historically underserved groups in higher education, how to be a better ally, how to be a better advocate, that working with students has opened my eyes in ways that enable me to use my position to help them and future students to overcome barriers that they face. So I've learned a lot through one-on-one -on -one conversation student, one -on -one conversations with students that way, and then also just needing to do my own research and reading to stay up on all the things that our young adults are going through today that I didn't, some of which I went through in college and others that I didn't. So um, Amanda, did, is that what you expected? <laughs> um, I had a shorter phrase, but yes. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I, and I agree. I, I think that, that throughout, not just these students, but students in general, um, that the, I think saying students in general is like that there are no students in general. Um, and so that, that every student is, is unique and has unique experiences, reacts to those experiences, internalizes them differently, and needs different support um, throughout their time at Ohio State. So what works for one student might not work for the other. Um, and really coming in with that openness into a conversation to, to really allow students to, to share and to not make ex assumptions going into a conversation. And, like I just did with Amy, thinking I know what she's going to say, um, and, but really kind of letting students um, speak and, and tell you themselves what they're thinking and um, kind of at an administrative level to not, to not guess what students are thinking, but, but really let them share themselves. Yeah, definitely. I mean Amanda thought I was going to say students be going through it, <laughs> which is also like an Amy tagline <laughs> because it's true because people go through so much that is unexpected and unpredicted. And I think Spring Forward is uniquely situated to help students through those moments. So. Yeah, and definitely like relating back to like their identities too is a huge component as I can see. Um, and then people having different experiences, especially things that are going on over the summer um, and just throughout this whole thing with the COVID pandemic going on um, and the fight still for things going on with like racial injustice and systematic right. racism still going yep. on um, and just everything within life. So they really be going through it. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last question that I have for you both. Um, so since you've been in different roles, so Amanda, with you being with Buckeye Link and also working with like military and veteran students and then Amy, you being advising and also teaching you both. So what do you love about Ohio State? And also what do you love about the Dennis Learning Center that you've been a part of since um, with the Spring Forward program or just like knowing about the Dennis Learning Center in Ohio State? 
So it's funny because I wanted, Ohio State was a school that I had applied to for college when I graduated from high school. And, it, and it's funny because Ohio Wesleyan could like fit in just North Campus of Ohio State. Like my hometown probably fits just in North Campus of Ohio State, maybe even more. Uh, so, you know, one thing I love about Ohio State is the amount of resources and support available to students. I really appreciate that I can find individualized ways to help students through. I love the school spirit that we have. I really miss just walking around campus and, and feeling like, you know, you're in a city of its own sorts and a city, a vibrant city where we can interact with people who are different from us from all over. And I think it's also just really great to be an Ohio State employee. I think that there's a lot of benefits to working at Ohio State. I'm proud to say that I work at Ohio State. <laughs> my parents will often just say, oh yeah, she works at Ohio State, and people will be like, wow, um, which is great. It's a great school. It's a great place to be, and I think one of my all-time favorite memories at Ohio State was I got to hand out diplomas to graduating students in May 2018, so standing on the field, handing out diplomas, and some of the students were people that I had advised since orientation, so all four years, and it was such a cool full circle moment, and I really look forward in 2023 to being able to do that with students that we worked with this past summer. We're going to get there. Maybe I'll also get my PhD diploma at the same time. That's the goal. I love the Dennis Learning Center. Uh, what do I love most about the Dennis Learning Center? I don't know. Maybe maybe you all, the academic coaches. I just, I think we're, we have the same mission, right? Like, which is to help students find whatever path to success works best for them and to provide a non-judgmental atmosphere for that to just help them identify what they need and connect it. I think the Dennis Learning Center offers a lot of great classes and programs and staff to help students accomplish that goal. I echo so much of what Amy said, um, but I think for me the the pride of Ohio State, the pride that students have working there, the pride that staff have working there, our students have learning there, staff have working there, um, and professors have teaching here that I think that that pride, I mean, you know, you can feel it really when you're in a stadium. I had a thing that I had to go to campus to today, actually, and, and I took my dog with me and, and we walked around Mirror Lake, you know, because we're supposed to be playing that team up north um, tomorrow. And, you know, this year is just not happening. But, you know, as a student who went to Ohio State, Mirror Lake was such a big um, part of that. And, and to just be able to walk around it and kind of feel just, you know, the nostalgia of, of doing that, I, I think is really I love it and I, and I love to see our students experience the same thing. Um, so I think that's really cool. With the Dennis Learning Center, um, I love how much the Dennis Learning Center teaches me. Um, and also true, yes. <laughs> and how, I mean, there are things that I didn't know about learning strategies and, and motivations and things like that and, until I started uh, researching to teach the class. Um, and so just the amount of things that I, I learned and, and things that I thought, man, I really like miss out for, for not taking advantage of this during, during my four years as an undergrad or even a grad student um, and, and how much better of a student I could have been, but how much easier maybe college would have been if I could have, if I would have done that. Um, so I think that's what I really appreciate. Yeah, teaching 2059 has also made me a better graduate student, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, because all the time, like, me coaching, like, undergrad or graduate students, like, okay, like, you have to practice, practice what you preach, so basically, like, help yourself <laughs> out, like, learning strategies and studying tips, like, well, yeah, I should be doing this right now and not this, so definitely. Yeah. Procrastinate maybe they say that to each other, too. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe I should take my own advice. <laughs> Well, Amy, Amanda, thank you both for participating in this Facebook Live. Um, this is our last Facebook Live for actually this year, um, since the year is ending up ending. Um, and definitely this was like the final day of classes, not classes, for your finals and for the semester. So I hope everyone did well out there for your finals and semesters. And happy holidays to you both and everyone out there in the DLC um, family and also friends. And I will see you again in January for another Facebook Live uh, for next semester. So thank you both and have a good night. Thanks, Tyler.